Hey guys, I'm continuing on with the Filco 3930 restoration project. Right now I'm working on the brass faceplate. Goes over the dial there and the push buttons. As you may recall, I had attempted to repaint this earlier and it turned out kind of rough. I'm not really happy with the way it looks. And that was primarily because of the primer I used, I think. So I'm stripping that off now, and I am using this clean strip, Strip X stripper. It's a gel stripper that works really well on polyurethane and enamel-based paints and stains and so on. Fairly potent stuff, and it works fast on this. I just applied this less than five minutes ago, and it, uh, it eats through this metallic paint almost immediately. And gets right down to the grayish primer underneath and then that will start bubbling off a few minutes later like it has here which gets us down to the underlying brass now I thought that that brass actually looked kind of good when I first got this radio but I've seen photos online and it does actually look better when you get the gold paint on it which is what it had originally so once I clean all this gunk off, I'm going to take another attempt at painting it. I'm going to use some different stuff this time. I'm spraying on some final coats of gloss lacquer up here in the attic. I never thought I'd be doing so much refinishing in mid-March, but it's pushing 80 degrees, which is crazy. So warm, in fact, that the attic fan is already kicked on with its thermostat that's meant to vent out hot air during the summer, not the winter. So I think uh, another coat of gloss, a little bit of light sanding, two more coats, and then I'll let it sit for a few weeks to cure before doing a final rub out of the finish. It's been about 24 hours since I sprayed the cabinet and it's looking really good. I'm going to give it one final light sanding with about 600 grit and two more light coats. Then after that's dried for a couple days, I'm going to sand out these areas and paint it with some artist enamel, just using a little brush. There's no point in putting this stuff on before spraying the, glo the gloss lacquer because you don't want this area to be shiny. It wasn't originally. It should be fairly flat or satin finish. Then I'll let this thing sit for a few weeks to really cure up. Lacquer will continue to cure and shrink for quite some time. So you really want to wait before rubbing it out. Here's how the painted bezel turned out. I first sprayed on some American Accents metallic aged brass, which was the right color, but the surface was a little rough. However, once I sprayed on some of this clear gloss enamel, it made it nice and smooth and quite nice looking, I think. Actually, there's two tasks. One is I need to set in this reproduction plastic dial face. Originally it was held in by little rivets. There were holes punched or drilled or melted into the plastic and then little rivets were put in and then crimped down. I did get, receive some new little rivets with this plastic. So I was thinking, well, okay, I could drill out these rivets, make some holes in the plastic and set the new rivets in, new rivets in. But I think it'll be a lot easier if I just get this set in place and it's a pretty tight fit and it actually fits pretty well with friction on its own but I'm, I'm going to leave the old rivets in and get this set in I can get the lip to go up and over the existing rivets and then maybe just touch the rivets on the opposite side with a soldering iron and see if that'll melt into the plastic a little bit otherwise maybe just a few dabs of glue here and there like I said, it's, it's a pretty tight fit and it holds in pretty well on its own, so I don't see any need to go to elaborate lengths to have it riveted in there. 
And that just leaves the task of making some new presets. This came with some old labels, but they were kind of faded and falling apart. Someone on the Philco Radio Forum uh, came up with the original font and provided some examples. So I think I can use my inkjet printer and some heavy stock and print out some new presets for these. I'm just about done with this radio. Thanks to YouTuber Farmall1938, I have the last of the Philco paper caps I was looking for. I'll be restuffing this and mounting it under the chassis. I also have the two mica caps that will hopefully get the presets working properly. So once I install those caps, hopefully the re electrical restoration will be complete. And moving on to the cabinet, the lacquer has cured up over the last couple weeks, so it's ready for a final rub out. I also painted around the grill area with some artist black acrylic paint. And I cleaned, I cleaned uh, the grill cloth as best I could without removing it from the cardboard, so that'll get mounted back on the reverse side there. I don't think it'll look too bad. Now as for mounting the speaker, what's these little screws here? A couple of them were pretty badly dinged up so I had to repaint them. So Unfortunately I can't put this set back together right now. I'm going to have to let these set up overnight. The paint I used was this Rust-Oleum Ultra Cover 2 Gloss Kona Brown. It's a pretty darn good batch for the original. Uh, the original was slightly darker, but I guess it's plenty close enough. Just beware when you use this paint. That Ultra Cover Times 2, they aren't kidding. This stuff uh, comes out thick and heavy, so keep the can moving while you're spraying it. I really do love these new uh, spray nozzles. At any angle, nice wide, uh, and you can really turn the can any, any which way and uh, no problems. So, good stuff. Now as for mounting the chassis back in the cabinet, something a little odd. When I got this radio, it came with these metal tuning fork like devices that were slid underneath the chassis. And the screws, the mounting screws, like there's one here, were going up through that. And I thought, oh, that, so that was just like a shim and the, to keep the chassis up off the cabinet. But I've never seen this before in a Philco radio. And it got me thinking that maybe these were not original. And somebody put these in because the original rubber feet had mushed down. Well, now I've got new ones on here, so I don't think I, I have that same issue. So I don't know if I'm going to bother reinstalling these. I'm going to post a, post a photo online and see what other guys have to say about it. Um, so I think that's it. Uh, I'm just going to wait overnight for those screw heads to dry up. And uh, in the meantime, I'll get these caps soldered in. And hopefully the next segment will be the finale.